next speaker is, uh, again, not a stranger to this organization, uh, Larry Cafiro, the House Republican leader in his ninth term in the State House of Representatives from Norwalk. Larry is a former chairman of the Board of Education, and Larry is an example of a caucus leader that shows that uh, good ideas and creativity are an antidote for lack of numbers. Larry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. I'm reminded of uh, a year ago. I think uh, this panel was assembled a year ago before you. And I remember before we began, uh, a member of your organization leaned over and said, remember, we all represent the same people. And that's a simple sentiment and certainly an obvious one, but it's one that uh, uh, really uh, stuck with me throughout the year because when a business closes, it might be a loss of revenue to the state, but it's also a loss of revenue to your town. When somebody uh, loses a job, it might be loss of income tax or economic uh, activity uh, on behalf of that person. It also is a loss to you. And I remember a year ago being here, and I remember listening very carefully during the Q&A. And this is what you said to us. You said to us, we realize you're, we are in tough shape as a state. And we don't expect much from you. We don't expect increase in funding to our municipalities. But we at the local level are doing all we can to plan ahead. We expect the same of you. We're making uh, cuts and efficiencies. We expect the same of you. You said to us, please do your job on time. If you're going to give us bad news, at least give it to us in advance so we can plan our own budgets. You said to us, the worst thing that you could do is delay your decisions because that, therefore, we have to delay our budgets. And we don't have the luxury of doing that as you do in the state. You said to us, listen, we understand you can't uh, give us more money, but for God's sakes, can you look at some of the mandates that you passed? Can you look at some of them and, and at, least, at least postpone them for a few years? You pointed out, for instance, the in-school suspension mandate. You pointed out the raise the age mandate. You pointed out things like posting your minutes uh, uh, on the website within seven days. You said, give us a break. We're all under some tough times. Can you suspend some of these? Some of you said, maybe you can think about suspending binding arbitration for a couple of years. Don't eliminate it, but just suspend it. We need a break. We realize you can't give us money, but we need a break. And for God's sake, you said, work together. We have to do it in our towns. Work together. Get your business done so we all can go forward and plan. You said to us you have a two-year budget, and if you're going to make cuts and efficiencies or close buildings or hospitals or schools, etc., you don't make that decision on a Friday for it to close on a Monday. You have to plan for it, and that's why we have a two-year budget. You said to us at the start of this session, take action now that will result in savings the second year of the biennium. Well, the year has come and gone, and I'm very sad to report to you, we did not do what you told us to do. We did not do our job. We had an $8 billion deficit, and this is the way we filled it. It wasn't with cuts, but mind you. We took $1.5 billion, $1.5 billion of our savings account, our rainy day fund, and we used it. I'm not faulting that. It was pouring. We had to use it. That's one shot. That's gone. We took about $1.5 billion from the federal government and their stimulus money. We gladly took it, uh, but that's gone. It's not coming back. In fact, uh, I was with our local congressman, Congressman Himes, and of course it was echoed by the President's State of the Union address. These are tough times and we're going to cut our belts, said the federal government. So if we expect to be bailed out, if you will, or get some uh, uh, dough from the federal government, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. We also said we're going to borrow $1.3 billion. We are going to borrow to fill that gap. It's a one-time borrowing. We borrowed a billion dollars to fill the gap that we did not close in the previous year. Together, that's $2.3 billion. These are all one-shots. So as we go forward in 20... Now, what we did not do, by the way, is we did not make any structural changes we did not combine any offices, any, any uh, agencies. We didn't really close any hospitals or schools or buildings. 
the budget did cut to municipalities $50 million over a two year period to you against the objection of many. So now we're faced with a situation where we're in the second year of that biennial budget and you're hearing us say, now we've got to get serious. Now we're going to plan. Now we're going to work together to find efficiencies, etc. Well, we let a year go by with none of that. A year go by with none of that. And you have every right to be disappointed in us. Many of us try for, uh, on several occasions, when we assembled you folks up in Hartford, I had the privilege of doing that um, on two occasions, and you told us what you wanted. You said, listen, Republican, Democrat, large town, small town, this is what we need. This is what we want. And we put it forth for voting. Unfortunately, it was turned down. So to come back to you a year later and say, now this time we mean it, is somewhat disingenuous and uh, somewhat, I presume, disappointing. Because when 2012 and 2013 rolls around and we have not made any cuts or changes to fill those one times, that result in a $4 billion deficit, then we're going to come before you and say, oh boy, now we really got to cut. Because we have no money. We can't borrow anymore. We can't tax anymore. There's no more rainy day fund. And the federal government isn't giving us any money. And then all of a sudden, we're going to turn to you and say, I guess we've got to take it from you. And you're going to say, wait a minute. That was so unnecessary. Had you done your planning two years before, you could have mitigated this. And you would be right. But well, that's where we find ourselves, and we can't just talk about efficiencies and working together, et cetera. I have to, I have to comment, uh, and this is fact, it's not finger pointing, but it's fact. Uh, Majority Leader Merrill mentioned the, the Moore Commission started by the Speaker on regionalization and regional planning. You know, how, how can you talk about bipartisanship when not one member of the other party, not one member out of 45 members, is a Republican who represent parts of the state. I think you folks are a little disappointed and you're frustrated just like the people we all represent. You expect more from us and you expect to do our job. On behalf of the minority party, I'll tell you this. We'll be there again this year, willing to extend a hand to the majority party, willing to put forth what you want, mandate relief, ready to put forth a plan that will mitigate the deficit in the future by cutting spending. We borrow, we tax, it's now time to cut. We spend more than we make, and we borrow more than we can afford to pay back. It's common sense. You folks live it every day. It's about time we did. That is my pledge to you. Thank you.